Hey everybody, it's Lyra from Lyra Gaming and today I'm going to show you how to build the perfect expansionist outpost. Within this outpost, when you build it out the way I show you, you'll get access to nine resources including aluminum, beryllium, cobalt, copper, iron, nickel, tungsten, silver, and helium-3. With these, you're going to be able to craft all the key outpost items that you're going to need in order to expand into the outer reaches of the universe. We're talking about unlimited crafting of transfer containers, wind turbines, solar arrays, storage units, which include solid, liquid, and gas units, pretty much all extractors, cargo links, both local and inter-system versions, landing pads with shipbuilders, mission boards, scan boosters, and more. Basically, if you're planning on going anywhere beyond the most basic outpost, you're going to want to follow this guide. Now, I've created plenty of timestamps below so you can get to the area that is most important to you. If you do find this guide helpful, please drop a like. I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback in a comment section below. And of course, if you want to see more Starfield content from me, make sure to subscribe. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look how you too can build the perfect expansion outpost. Now, to get started, you're going to want to have a starter outpost that has cobalt, aluminum, iron, and nickel. One of the easiest ways to get this done is to watch my video on how you can both find and make your outpost on Bessel 3-B. It's a very specific method and it can be a bit tricky, but if you watch the video that should be popping up in the right, upper right hand corner, I show you step by step exactly how to do this. And if you follow that, you will have the baseline of the outpost that you see before you. Now I did wanna spend a quick moment talking about requirements. Without any skill allotment at all, you can get seven out of nine of these resources, which is a great start. But if you wanna get the full setup, including nine resources, you're gonna to want to commit to Outpost Management 1. You only need to get the first point here because we need the additional cargo links in order to get up to six cargo links as opposed to the three that you start with. Since this guide is intended for those that want to expand past just the bare minimum setups of outposts, this isn't that much of a commitment. Now this build is going to utilize a total of six outposts as designed. Now I have chosen the systems of Bessel, Altair, and Narian for a couple reasons. Number one, they're all relatively low level. We're talking about level 10 and 15 levels. So you're not going to get attacked by any high level monsters or enemies here. They're also very close together, so as you're building these outposts, it's just very quick to get around. And again, we use the Bessel 3-B location for our main production facility slash outpost because it is quite simply the best low level starting planet. You can hear all the details why it's so great in my Outpost for Dummies video. Now I'm gonna pop up an image of an Excel spreadsheet that I created. As you'll see here, it's going to show you all of the planets that we utilize for this build, as well as the systems. Do note at the bottom of the spreadsheet image here, I show Planetary Habitation 1. If you happen to commit all the way down here, you can actually do this utilizing two systems instead of three, as the Bessel system does have two planets that have local helium, three and beryllium, Unfortunately, they are deep freeze planets, so they do require rank one of planetary habitation in order to settle them. And that requires a minimum of 12 points in science. As this is a mere inconvenience, I don't see it as a requirement. So this build is gonna assume that you did not get planetary habitation. And instead of settling Bessel 3-A, you're gonna go to the Narion system and settle and draft on instead. Now looking at the spreadsheet again, at the very top where it shows perfect resource extractor, it shows how on the planet we're gonna have cobalt, aluminum, iron, and nickel naturally. And to the right in orange, we're going to be importing copper, tungsten, helium-3, 
silver and beryllium now we're going to be exporting beryllium and helium to our perfect resource extractor outpost from androphon and then as you can see on this diagram we're going to be exporting copper from atair 3 tungsten from atair 4-c silverum from atair 1 and helium 3 from atair 3c now when it comes down to it you basically have four different types of outposts you have your main outpost you're going to have one outpost that is going to provide helium as well as your beryllium directly to the main outpost and unfortunately in this case it's going to be in a different system then you're going to have an outpost whose only job is to provide helium 3 to your outpost that will provide silver tungsten and copper to your main outpost and finally there's going to be an outpost layout that's going to be identical for the outposts that are going to provide copper tungsten and silver to your main base we're going to go ahead and take a look at what each one of those looks like and how to set them up right now and we will start with your main base setup all right guys here we are looking at a bird's eye view of vessel 3-b this is roughly what's going to look like when it's completed now if you're coming here straight from my outpost for dummies video where i show you how to set this up you're not going to have a bunch of things here so let's talk about what we're going to need to add to that setup for starters what you will have are the four extractors like nickel over here you got cobalt and then the other two around so those will be there and each one will have corresponding storages now what you're going to need to add are going to be five inter-system cargo links so i put one here i put one here 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 and here and for four of them you're going to want to put some solid storage containers and for one of them you're going to go ahead and put the gas version that's going to be for the helium now do note that the way i'm going to set this up you won't know right away which one of these platforms will have helium delivered to it so you may end up having to adjust your connections later but for now don't worry just place them wherever you need just make sure you have one set of gas storage containers now i do want to point out that i do have a transfer container here and it is disconnected i did this on purpose so that the lines wouldn't be too confusing for a viewer but note that you can reconnect them when you're done all you're going to do is look at the end of a chain of any of these storage units and then right click to create output link and then connect it to the transfer container and you can do that for each one of the resources so you can have up to nine of them in this setup here so for now when you set up these cargo links i do not want you to connect any of them yet to the storage units because what i want to do first is go and show you what the other outposts will look like we're going to set them up and then quite literally send them over here to connect then we're going to come back and link up everything to the storage units so for now let's go ahead and go to Androphon on in the Narion system and this is where you're going to get your beryllium as well as your helium that you're going to need for all of these inter-system setups all right, here we are on Androphon. Now, do note, when you create this outpost, you don't have to get too fancy with the location. As long as you have a helium spot as well as a beryllium spot, you're going to be fine. Do note, as of the main area that I just showed you, our main outpost, I do have the transfer container disabled to just make the lines look a little cleaner. And don't mind some of the extra buildings that I built here. All that matters is the following you are going to need exactly two inter-system cargo links and you're going to have your extractors and there's going to be two of them here's your beryllium one you're going to connect it to any number of solid storage units and then you're going to have two helium three extractors it's very important that you have two of them in order to keep the game from kind of bugging out so I have multiple solar arrays here to power it. I like to overkill it. And what you're going to do 
is you're going to take one of these Helium 3 extractors and then you're going to create an output link. So again, right click and then you're going to connect it to the back end of each of the inner system cargo links. So there's one here and the other one goes to the back here. And the whole purpose here is for it to pump enough helium so that these can operate. The second extractor is going to go ahead and connect to multiple gas storage units. And at the end, you're going to go ahead and connect it to the red, which is the output box on your first intersystem cargo link. After that, you're going to go ahead and take your beryllium going to connect it to your storage units here. Do the same chain effect and do the same thing to the second inter-system cargo link. Make sure again you connect it to the red one. At this point, you're going to manually run over to each one of the cargo link areas. You're going to go to the control console. And then when you activate this, notice mine's already connected. So if this was fresh and you did not connect anything yet, you will have seen perfect resource extractor. That's the location you want. It would have five open cargo links and none of them would be green like this. And all you would do is you would click on it, hit E to select, and it would turn green like this. And you'll notice on the left, it'll say helium, beryllium out. That's just simply the name of this outpost. And it says outgoing resources, helium three and perfect resource extractor, nothing here. This is exactly how you wanna set it up. Once you're done with this, go ahead and run over to your other cargo link, do the same exact thing. And then when it connects, it should say that beryllium is coming out of that one. And if you've done those two things, you are all set. Now that covers our helium needs and beryllium, but now we need to see how we're gonna get copper, tungsten, and silver from a different system. And those three planets are going to need their own source of helium. So let's see how we set up an outpost that's going to send helium to numerous local outposts. For that, we're going to go ahead and jump over to Altair 3-C. Okay, here we are at Altair 3-C. And setting up this outpost is really simple. You don't have to be picky. You just need to find a place of helium. You're going to want to drop multiple solar arrays just so you have plenty of energy. And what we need here are three different helium three extractors. This again is to make sure that we minimize the chance that the game will bug out. Each one of them, you're going to connect to a series of gas storages. Make sure you link them. And then you are going to create three different cargo links, not inter-system ones, just normal cargo links. And very important, again, make sure you connect them to the red boxes. So when you zoom out, it's going to look like this, three different setups. And again, all you're going to do is run over to each one of these platforms, interact with the control box. But now when you go to connect, you're going to be selecting your three different outposts in this system, Altair 3, Altair 4-C, and Altair 1. Now this is assuming you've set those up already to create extractions. If you're just watching this in order, obviously that's not done yet. So just keep that in mind. Now the good news is those three planets are going to be identical, except the only difference is they're each going to have a different resource that they're going to mine, either copper, tungsten, and silver. Now, as an example, let's go ahead and go to Altier 3, and I'll show you how that's going to look like. It's going to be really nice and basic. All right, here we are on Altier 3, and this is an example of an outpost that is going to be sending one specific resource to your main base in a different system. So the first thing you're going to have here is a cargo link. And again, this is, does not need to be an inter-system one because this is where you're going to be receiving your helium to support 
your other inter-system cargo link. And as a reminder, the reason you need this is most planets, you cannot get helium on them, you're gonna be getting them off moons. So you gotta import them. So again, make sure you go ahead and make a connection from the green side of the cargo link. And you're gonna create a multi-spot gas storage. And then at the end, make sure to link it to the back end of the inter-system cargo link. And then as normal, you're gonna have, in this case, your copper extractor. You're gonna have your chain of multiple solid storages. The last one, you go ahead and connect to the red box on the outgoing cargo link. And again, it is the inter-system version. Do note in this setup, I did leave the transfer container. So this is what it would look like. That third and final storage solid box, you can go ahead and right click, create an output link and connect it to your transfer container. Now as an important reminder, make sure do not accidentally ever connect your transfer container to that inter-system cargo link output box because it will glitch everything out and it's gonna just like fully move everything around non-stop and nothing will ship out. So just as simple as that, just make sure you have a similar setup on the other planets to get the silver and the tungsten as well. As we mentioned just a few minutes ago, you will have connected the helium from out here 3-C to connect to here once this is built. And then you can go ahead and interact with this platform and make sure that the resource from here is heading over to your perfect resource extractor base, your main base on vessel 3-B. Follow that process, and if you've done everything correctly, you will now have all the resources of copper, tungsten, helium, silver, beryllium, as well as helium heading over to your main base. All right, guys, so here we are back at your main base, and this is a perfect example where everything has arrived, and it's a total coincidence, but we have all five transport ships at the same time. Normally, they're not that exact but there we go but imagine that you hadn't linked everything yet and these lines aren't here yet so the very first thing you're going to want to actually do is you're going to want to run around to each one of these platforms and identify which one says that the helium 3 is coming in so here's an example of me doing that i ran over here and if you check this specific platform just mouse over the cargo link that's set up look to the right if it's helium 3 you found the right one if it's one of the other resources like silver keep moving because we want to identify which one requires the gas storage once you've identified it you're going to go ahead and exit here now it just happened to be coincidental that i had the storage units for it right outside you may have them in a different area so if you're OCD about it, you can move the storage units closer. At that point, you're going to go and connect the incoming Helium-3 to your Helium connectors. And then from that final connection here, the final gas storage unit, you're going to need to create an output link and go to the back ends of all the inter-system cargo links. So it may look a little wonky as it's going through the buildings, but just make sure it connects to the back. And when you mouse over it, you'll see there's all this helium. Do that for every single one. So when you're done, you'll have it looking exactly like this. There'll be five lines heading out of here. And so this will make sure that there's helium for all of them. Then the final part is really easy. You already know all the other materials are solid, so you don't even have to go and check them. Go ahead and make sure you go and connect the incoming, the green containers, and connect them to the appropriate storage solid units and interlink them. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can take that final step if you'd like 
and connect the last of the storage units and connect them to the transfer container. I would probably recommend that you don't connect your helium to it. You rarely need to manually grab it. If you do just run over, but it's just one less thing for these transfer containers to compete against. If you saw my last video that talked about transfer containers and cargo links, there is a bit of a bug. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's working as intended, but these will kind of compete for storage. There's only roughly 500 room in the transfer containers. And sometimes one or two of these resources will completely fill this out. And until you take some of them out, you won't even see other ones appear. Now, finally, let's talk about functionality. Now, this is a very ghetto setup, but it gets a job done and it proves a point. Basically, I have an industrial workbench here. And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, you basically can infinitely produce everything you need for the majority of main key items for outposts. So this does include simple items that will be prerequisites like adaptive frames, comm relays, authentic manifolds, reactive gauges, tau grade rheostats, zero wires, etc. Now crafting these will get you EXP, but also obviously the materials you need. And now if you go to any other base or even on this base and you go to craft, if you take a look, we have all the materials for the different storage units, for the transfer containers, for the various extractors. Water ones, for example, have some weird requirements when it's water vapors, but all the key ones you're gonna find, you're gonna be set for. Same with both types of cargo uh, link setups, cruise stations, landing pads, etc., etc. So what's nice is you just kind of gather up and craft all the materials you need beforehand, before you head to a new outpost location. Then when you land, you already know you have enough to create everything you need in the outpost. It makes it really effective, really simple. And then if you want to get more advanced, if you invest in skills to unlock be better and bigger designs, then you can go and hunt down the exotic resources you need for that. Now, don't forget, you can also craft some of these more complicated designs that will sell for more so you can make as much money as you want. Simply mass craft and then fly over to any place to sell them. As a friendly reminder, remember, you can run around of as much encumbrance as you want. You could take 10,000 weight. You will take damage, but you'll be able to move and you'll never drop below around 10% health. You can also, of course, farm EXP by just mass crafting and a ton of items. And as a friendly reminder here, don't forget that one of the reasons we chose this specific location for your main base is this crazy ratio of 58 hours roughly for every hour rested. So this game does function off the UT time, not your local time. So resting one hour is 58 hours of extracting. It's 58 hours of the ships flying back and forth. And it also counts towards vendors resetting to so get their money back. So there you have it, guys. Your perfect outpost if you want to expand and have a universe spanning outpost system. I hope you found this really helpful. If you did, help me out, drop a like, let me know your thoughts and feedback and any other recommendations to share with the viewers in the comments below. Of course, if you wanna keep supporting me and seeing more content from me, please subscribe. I thank you for all of your support and I'll see you guys in my next video.